One of the most common areas that beginners struggle with is product research and the process to follow when evaluating something that they found on Amazon. So in this video, I just thought I'd run you guys through the kind of thought process that I go through when I first discover a product that I like the look of. So let's get right into it. If we jump into the computer, let's just pretend that I've been doing some product idea generation and I've come across a posture corrector or a product uh, that helps people straighten their backs. So let's just pretend that I don't know that's the actual name of the product. I've just kind of seen somebody wearing it down the gym or in the shop. So I type in maybe back um, support strength, you know, strengthener. There's a reason that I'm doing this. Um, it's to basically show you what to do if you don't know the right keyword. So you, the first thing you do, even if you do think you know the right keyword, is head on to Amazon, type in the name of the product that you are hoping to sell, search for it, and then you'll want to run Helium 10. So we, the tool that we want to use with Helium 10 is X-Ray. We'll click into it, and what we hope to see is a good amount of search volume and sales demand. Okay, so the results have loaded and exactly what I wanted to happen has happened. You can see here where it says search volume NA, that is basically telling me that the keyword that I've used is incorrect. So if you ever search for a product that you want to explore further on Amazon, after you've run Helium 10's X-Ray tool, regardless of what you see here with sales demand or anything like that, look at the search volume. And if you see NA or something that is very low, below 800 or 1,000, I'd say, if you're in the UK or a couple of thousand if you're in the US, odds are that you have used the wrong keyword. Now, it's really important that you use the right keyword when searching for a product on Amazon because you want to ensure that you're being shown the most relevant results that customers are seeing themselves and buying. This is basically saying to me that no customers are searching using the word back support strengthener for the product that I want to sell. And if we think that there is demand for this product, which it looks like there is from the revenue column, then that means that we're using the, the wrong search keyword, basically. So what do you need to do if that happens? Before you even think about diving into the data, you need to scroll down onto the actual listings and look for something that you think does resemble what you want to sell. Here we can see Voca Posture Corrector. That is what I saw in the gym, in the park, whatever, that gave me that initial idea. So what you would do is you would click into the listing and there's two ways of doing this. You can either scroll down to the Helium 10 Chrome extension and press the keywords button or just go directly onto helium10.com and go into Cerebro. Just because it's way quicker, I'm going to click the keywords button, which has now loaded Helium 10's Cerebro tool. So if you haven't come across it before, the Cerebro tool is basically a reverse search engine. So it can look at any product on Amazon and find out what keywords or search terms that product appears for when customers are browsing on Amazon, when they're searching on Amazon. So I've just run it, run it for that listing there. Um, this is, these are the steps that you need to follow as well. So what you'll do is come to where it says organic rank and change that to be one, two, 24, say. So that basically is, is saying we only want to be shown keywords where the product appears between position one to 24 in the search result. We then want to change this to say organic. So we don't want anything to do with keywords that are being uh, paid for and then we'll press apply filters. And then once the results have loaded at the bottom, we need to press the search volume column header. And that will basically put all the keywords into order by search volume. So you can see now that the most popular uh, keyword associated with this product is posture corrector men with 9,973 searches per month. Then after that, it is, would you believe it, Posture Corrector, 6,600. So uh, funnily enough, Posture Corrector Men, which is a bit more specific, has more searches. I, I would advise you 
Um, when searching on Amazon, when you're doing your initial product research, don't go too specific, but also don't go too broad what I was doing earlier. So I would actually go for either posture corrector or back brace. I probably wouldn't go for posture corrector men at this stage, even though it does have a higher amount of search volume, just because it's going to be a bit more limiting with the products that are being shown. So what we'll do is we can either press this little arrow button here, or we can just go to amazon.co.uk and type in posture corrector. And what that should now do is show us the most relevant results for the product that we want to sell. So you can see the results that are appearing here are indeed posture correctors, which is great. So now we can actually start running the Helium 10 tool properly and diving into the data. And this is what I do every single time. I always make sure that the search volume is there before I even think about going into the data. So what we'll now do is press the Helium 10 button and then press X-ray and then have a look at what the data is telling us. Once the results load, you can check the search volume is actually higher than that 800 to 1000 kind of cutoff point. And you can see it is here. So our Cerebro tool was accurate. And then you'll need to remove anything that says SP next to it. So SP is short for sponsored product. And it basically means that that listing there is paying. It's basically in an advertising spot. So it's paying to be at the top. Now, the reason that we want to remove these is because they're not there like all the time. Only they're, they're only there for as long as their budget lasts. So their sales may not necessarily be reflective of the niche as a whole. So there are two ways of doing that. You can either press the tick boxes and then press the little bin or a much easier and quicker way is press filter results and then press hide sponsored products from results. And once you've done that, it will remove all the sponsored products uh, listings from the entire uh, results list, which is great. So now we can actually start to look through each column to understand whether this is a niche that has demand and whether there might be an opportunity for us to start selling and differentiate and make some money. So I always uh, scroll up to the top and the first thing that I'll kind of glance my eye down is just the brands like really quick glance just to make sure that there's no massive brand names in there such as you know like adidas nike apple whoever and if there are that typically means that they'll have massive budgets and it will be really hard to compete with them but you know for the posture correct niche something that's you know much smaller than trainers or whatever gym wear it's it's unlikely that you're going to be competing against these big guys the second thing I look at is the price point. Now, the price point is important because we don't want the average selling price to be so low that the profit per unit is just going to be completely unworthwhile. So something like, you know, 50p or 50 cent. So I always make sure that the typical price being sold by sellers is above the nine or 10 pound mark. And that's at the very low end. Or if you're in the US, the 10 or 11 dollar mark. And then on the upper side, you want to make sure that it's not so expensive that a customer has to think twice about a purchase. So, you know, they do a lot of shopping around or they just think, oh, I'm not going to bother. So I will typically look for niches that are priced at a maximum of around 30 to 35 pounds. If you can find a niche with demand around that mark, you stand to make a good amount of profit per unit. So you can see here, there's quite a few, you know, sellers at the 15 pound or so mark, so quite a few ticks. The next thing that I will look at is the revenue column. Now the revenue column is really important to assess because it's that that tells you whether there is sufficient demand. Now in terms of what figure should you expect to see, that all comes down to how much money you want to make per month. It is specific to the person doing the research. So I can't say to you, it should be £5,000 or $5,000. It all comes down to you. My rule of thumb is whatever amount you want to make per month in profit, you need to be seeing in the revenue column when you multiply by three. And the reason we do multiply by three is because profit margins on Amazon are often before advertising 30%. So if I wanted to make a £1,000 profit per month, I need to see sellers making 
£1,000 times three, £3,000 revenue per month, okay? And ideally, you want to see at least five sellers doing that. If there's just one seller doing it, there's probably not enough demand or there's a reason for it. Maybe they've got a patent or they are a big brand. So let's pretend I want to sell posture correctors and I want to make a thousand pounds profit per month. One thousand pound times three, three thousand. So I need to see five sellers making more than three thousand pounds revenue. And we can see one, two, three, four, five. That basically everyone is doing over that. So there is enough demand in this niche, guys. That is honestly probably one of the most important things to get right. It doesn't matter if you get the search volume right, if you get the branding right, the pricing right. If there is no revenue in the niche that you're looking at, then the product that you send in is just going to be collecting dust and you won't make any money. OK, so we've established that the, the kind of next step that you can take if you're unsure. I'm sure with the posture director posture corrector so i haven't done it is to check whether it's a seasonal or trending product ideally we want to be selling something that gives us profit every month of the year instead of just in the hot months of the year or the cold months i think posture correctors aren't seasonal at all I, I don't see why they would be but if you weren't sure what you can either do is click the search volume graph at the top and you can change it to 90 days or a year and if you see really sharp increases and decreases and that's when it might be, you know, thought of as a seasonal product. It's not here. This is, you know, it hasn't had a bit of a decline there, but you can see that it's not. Another thing that you can do is to click the sales graph just to have a look at what a particular seller is doing. And again, you can kind of, you know, assess that it's it's not particularly seasonal, is it? It would be a lot more like a roller coaster, sharp increases and then very rapid decreases if it was. Um, so another column that is of interest to me that Healing 10 have recently introduced is this seller country region. For some reason, it's not actually loading on my page at the moment, so I'm just going to quickly refresh. But what that column does is tell you where the seller is from. And that is really interesting to us because if we see that the entire column says CN China and there's nothing saying GB or US, that is an opportunity for us to differentiate. In this current climate, especially after the pandemic, people want to support small businesses, especially small local businesses. So if when you run this Helium 10 tool, if all you see is a sea of China sellers, there's no UK sellers at all, then that is going to be an opportunity for you to you know, possibly come in and sing about it as loud as you can on your listing, say we're a UK brand, we're a US brand, European brand, you know, and we really, really want you to support us. Um, let's see if it loads. Yes, yeah, so you can see here we've got a couple of GBs. For some reason, my either my internet's really slow or I don't know, but it's saying NA. Normally it doesn't say NA, it will, it will tell you, but you can see a couple here, can't you? Um, you've got CN, GB, GB, and so on. So that's the kind of next thing that I check. And then the kind of final thing that I'll look at before I decide whether this niche is worth diving into in a bit more detail is the rating and review count columns. Historically, people on YouTube have said, don't go into a niche if you know the sellers with more than 200 reviews because you won't sell. That's not true. As somebody that generates six figures a month on Amazon, I'm consistently launching new products. That is not true. I have launched in niches where my competitors have thousands of reviews, but if you are going to do that, you need to make sure that your idea is somewhat original or your product offer is somewhat differentiated. You can't just rely on being a UK seller, for example. It would need to be really clearly differentiated if you want to compete in a niche like this. So you can see, you know, we've got sellers with 13,000 reviews, 35,000 reviews, 66, like humongous amounts. And when you kind of start getting to the point where every single seller has more than a thousand reviews you need to have something that really does set you apart so you need to have an amazing listing you know you need to use your location to your advantage ideally you want to change the product somehow improve upon it etc etc i've spoken about this at length on my channel um if you want to kind of dig through my older videos but just make sure you're doing that so that's a you know really important point to pay attention to. And something that could give you an idea of a way to differentiate is 
ratings, right? What customers have actually written. So this one here, for example, we'll do this one because there's barely any. It's got a 3.7 score with only 13 reviews. So if we click into the listing, what you can do or what I would do is have a look at what people are complaining about and, you know, then think to yourself, is that something that I can fix or improve with, with my listing? So if we scroll down and have a look at the one stars, so we've got one here that says not worth the money, absolutely useless, tried it on, it was too big. So there you go. They've got their sizing wrong. OK, and someone else there has said small size. So I guess that's something that people are unhappy about. This, the measurements on the listing aren't accurate. So that would be something that you absolutely would need to nail on yours. In addition to having, you know, an amazing um, listing, amazing branding, shouting about being from the UK and so on. Make sure that you get your measurements right. You know, these are all little clues here. So that is generally what I do. The process that I follow when I'm researching products myself or when students of mine message me and say, what do you think to this product? Of course, there is so much more that you need to do after this stage. This is just the kind of initial verification, right? If it passes the kind of demand check, if it passes the no big brands check, if it passes the no, you know, initial saturation check that you get from looking at reviews, that is when you then go on to contacting suppliers to assess you know, profitability and how you can differentiate it. That is when you'd start thinking about branding and what you can do moving forwards with future products and so on and so on. So this is kind of what I would suggest you start with whenever you find a product. Follow these steps of, you know, checking the search term that you're using is correct by looking at the search volume and then running the Helium 10 tool and going through each of those columns. And, you know, it might seem really difficult and hard to remember when you're watching me doing it. But I've been doing this for four years. I've been doing it a long time. And I can promise you, once you've done it for a week or so, once you've kept following these steps over and over, it will get so much easier and it will become second nature. So what I would say, guys, is start doing your research now. Have this lesson playing on your phone or in a different uh, window. Do it along and just you know keep repeating it and you'll eventually develop muscle memory it become really easy and you'll soon find a product worth pursuing. So that is it for this tutorial. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you would like any other Helium 10 tutorials or Jungle Scout, AMZ Scout, whatever, just let me know and I will be there to help you. So enjoy the rest of your day, evening, week, whatever, and I'll see you next time.